Okay, for number 12, we have composition functions we're working with. So you want to make sure you understand what this, uh, by using the definition, to know what that means. Now, first of all, f of g does not mean f times g. You're not doing multiplication. It actually means you're putting something into something else. So you're putting a function into another one. So for i, let's start with that one and write the definition. What this means is that you want to find g of 0 first. When we get the answer for that, then we'll put it back into the f to get the answer. So notation-wise, this is the correct way of writing that. Let's first do g of 0. Okay, so g of 0 means that we got to put a 0 in, into the g function in place of the x. So we're going to do 0 plus 3 over 2, and we get 3 halves. Now the 3 halves, we now can say that what we have here is we've done the g of 0, we got 3 halves. So now our problem turns into f of 3 halves. So once we find f of 3 halves, then that's going to be our answer for f of g of 0. So let's do that. If we want to find f of 3 halves, that means we're going to put 3 halves into the f function in place of f. 1 over, instead of the uh, x there, we're going to put in 3 halves. And so then what happens here is the 2's the are going to cancel out, and you end up getting 1 over 0. So because uh, that cancels and you get 3 minus 3, 1 over 0, what, we, what we'll say then for our answer is we'll say f of g of 0 is undefined. Okay, so undefined because we end up with something you can't do. So if you work through all the steps and you get to something that, you're, that you can't do, then we've got to say undefined for that. So that is i. Let's look at double i next. Now double i, what we had for, for that one, so we're going to do all this, got to do one at a time here because of the space required here for it. Okay, so double i, they want you to find g of f of x, but then it also says write it as a single fraction. So sometimes there may be some special instructions like factor or write as a single fraction that we have to pay attention to when we're doing this. Okay, so we're going to do g of f of x. First, we start with the definition. Okay, so we have g of f of x. This means that we've got to put the f into the g. So f of f, or uh, f of x rather, is going to be 1 over 2x minus 3. 1 over 2x minus 3, that's going to go inside. So this time we don't have a number to put in, which means that we're not going to get a numerical answer. Instead, we're going to get an expression as our answer. We've got to do g of 1 over 2x minus 3. This has got to go into the g function. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 1 over 2x minus 3. So here's what that'll look like. Here's my original template. I've got something plus 3 over 2. If I remove the x, this is what I have left over. That space, the x, is going to get replaced with whatever I have inside the parentheses. So I have 1 over 2x minus 3. Now it does say write it as a single fraction, so I want to get some common denominators with this. So what I can do here is the 1 over 2x minus 3 part um, that has the common denominator we need. The 3 can be written this way as 3 over 1, but I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2x minus 3 so I can get a common denominator for the top part. So once I do this, uh, this part, then what I'll have left is uh, 1 plus the 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply this part out. So 6x minus 9 and all that's over our common denominator of 2x minus 3. Now what about the 2 that's down here? Well, what I'm going to do is, if, once I get a single fraction up here, whenever you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this whole thing on top turns into that fraction, but I'm going to multiply that by the reciprocal of 2. So I'm going to multiply this by uh, 1 half. So now, by doing that, I, I got rid of the double fractions. The last thing we want to do is just simplify our answer. And so when we simplify this, you've got 1 minus 9, so we're going to do 6x minus 8. And that's going to be over 2 times 2x minus 3. So 
It's okay to leave your answer in that form. There is a little bit more you could do with this though. Because the extra two that's out front there, we can actually use that and divide both things on top by that one. So let me come up here so we have some more space. Uh, if I factor out a two from the top, I get four X minus, uh, or three X rather, three X minus four. And I have a two on the bottom, which cancel. And so I get three X minus four over two X minus three. That would be the most simplified version. But you could also use, uh, I would also take this as an answer as well. Um, so, but the final reduced answer is a single fraction would be 3x minus 4 over 2x minus 3. Okay. So now we're going to move on to uh, part 3, okay, and that's going to be f of g of x. <clears throat> Okay, we want to find f of g of x. We want to use the definition for that. Definition this time would be this. It would be f of g of x. That means you're putting the g into the f. So the g here, you're going to replace the, the g with the expression x plus 3 over 2. x plus 3 over 2, we're putting that in, into the, uh, in for g. Now we have to put this into the f function. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to use the f function as a template. I have 2 times x, which I'm going to take out. Okay, so here's the rest of that equation. Remove the x, replace it with x plus 3 over 2. So I'm going to put that in here, x plus 3 over 2. All right, so then what happens is by doing that, the 2's are going to cancel out. So instead of multiplying that through, I'll cancel it out out front. Now what I'm left with is 1 over x plus 3 minus 3 that I have once I cancel out the 2's. Well the 3's are going to cancel out also and so I get 1 over x. So what I would write is f of g of x is going to equal uh, 1 over x. And so that would be my the final equation for that. Okay and this is now going to be I should put that, this is uh, part 3. Okay, so part three, uh, the answer should be one over x. Now notice if you go back to uh, i, the first part, originally it asked us to find f of g of zero. And we went through that numerically and we showed that that was undefined. Well notice if we were to do this part first and find the f of g part first and then plug a zero in for that one, once again we'd also get something undefined. So you could actually do that problem uh, either way.